In this video, we're going to show you how we are designing and building a six seat, six berth motorhome on a Mercedes Sprinter four wheel drive cab chassis. It's a dual cab, and we think it's pretty compact considering the kind of accommodation that it's got. And we're trying to use organic materials to minimise toxicity and to make it as eco friendly as possible. At Inside Outback Campers, we design and consult on such projects. The bare chassis that Mercedes make, like many Europeans, is designed not to twist, which makes it quite different to most Japanese chassis and American chassis that are designed to twist. The box section rails, but especially the box section cross members and the rigid connection to the back of the cab, are what sets the European chassis design apart. The cross members especially are designed to uh, minimise or eliminate the amount of twist, the differential twist between the two main longitudinal rails. And this is really quite different to say uh, another one that we did uh, a couple of years ago on a Nissan Navara chassis. The cross members on the Japanese chassis are either tubes or open channels and they're allowed to twist. In fact, the, the manufacturers intend them to twist and in the Navara, we had 25 millimetres of twist from side to side uh, when we did our diagonal twist test. And that's, uh, that's quite a bit and it needs to be accommodated so that when you go off road, the, the, the motorhome body is not stressed or causing the chassis to stress, which would ultimately lead to cracking. But in the European style, it's all got to happen in the suspension. And that means that unlike, a, say, a Unimog, which has got an extreme amount of travel in the suspension plus chassis twist the sprinter has got relatively limited suspension travel and and that means that it's going to a little bit you know be a little bit limited in in the uh, sort of off-road work that it can do but that's more than capable of seeing pretty much all of australia in uh, there are more remote areas etc this particular vehicle that we're working with here uh, it's 10 years old, it's got 47,000 k's on it. It was effectively rescued from uh, a coal mine where it had been, ironically, a rescue vehicle. So it used to have a, a big specialist work body on the back that came off. We bought it as a bare cab chassis. And what we're intending to put on then is a full motorhome, um, six berth, with full galley, shower and toilet, and all of the things that you'd expect in a motorhome, including for Australian climates, uh, good crossroad ventilation, good shade control, and um, a very big fridge. And the whole thing, except for the motive power, will be solar powered. One of the things that we're really trying to achieve here is to minimise the eco impact of the production of the vehicle as much as its operation and in this case we've chosen to use ingrain balsa cord composite panels that use flax for the reinforcing you know a bioepoxy resin bioepoxy which is derived from canola oil so essentially the body was grown in a paddock or a forest the whole thing and uh, we've used a little bit of carbon fiber judiciously in the high stress points and that's one of the things that really sets it apart from conventional motorhome body construction. A lot of systems and manufacturers out there use aluminium joining pieces, extrusions at corners and so on. And, uh, and while they're not bad, they're just not as good as this kind of contiguous connection where the stressed skins are effectively connected to one another completely continuously. So the stress is shared right around universally the whole joint. The European method as set out in the Mercedes bodybuilders guide is to mount the body rigidly to the chassis and to the back and or the roof of the cab and we chose just to mount it to the back of the cab um, we're suspending over the roof in this particular case, because the roof is so big, uh, six metres long nearly, we chose to go as light as we can, which did mean going away from the balsa core and flax reinforcing. 
Uh, we went back to conventional PVC foam and e-glass, but stuck with the bio-epoxy resin. And, uh, and the roof was built in the way we normally design these things with kerfing, which is a series of little cuts that allow you to bend the sides. That gets re-glassed. In this case, we used um, carbon fibre so that we could pull that round with minimal extra weight. And that then carries the whole PV system on top, which is um, glued down with little spaces to hold the panels off the roof so they can dump their heat, which is quite important for maintaining efficiency. The rest of the body was then painted in a more or less conventional way. Um, that means that we've used a conventional automotive paint on the body. The roof was completely pre-assembled in the workshop and then carried outside uh, with a couple of blokes, put onto the genie lifter and lifted up into place. The hinges were connected at the rear and the lifters uh, inside at the front. And uh, that'll be the subject of the next video, episode two. Windows and door were then installed, and this is one frustration we've had with this particular project, that the manufacturer of the windows seemed to think that those internal fixing trims didn't need to have the same corner radius as the window itself. So we're going to have some work to do there to tidy that up. And uh, also the door was 10 millimetres different in height from one side to the other. So a bit sloppy, disappointing Australian manufacturing there. Uh, and really nothing to be particularly proud of. But then it went off and, uh, and got painted uh, and is now having the canvas fitted. And once that uh, comes back and we get the, the lifting gear installed completely, then we'll make the next video and that'll be in a few weeks' time, followed ultimately by the internal fit-out joinery and, and electrical systems. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, there are lots of Sprinter movies out there on the web. Some real beauties. We hope this is amongst them. Thanks.